Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the, the film don't lie. And this is a special. I, I, I've been using special all week. I just keep going. Special all 22 edition, bye week edition. And guys, as the Panthers head into the bye week, a chance for us to kind of slow down and look at the Panthers more on a global scale. They sit right now at 7-3. and three. With the weekend off, and next week, get ready for the New York Jets. We'll talk about that more uh, next week. So let's focus on the Panthers. One of the things we're seeing right away is that it appears that the Cam Newton of 2015 is back, guys. I'm hearing talk about this all week, about his ability now, because he's healthier, to beat teams in three ways. Call him a triple threat. First way, through the air second way through the ground, and then third way with his mind because of the things he's doing on the field. Which one of those jumps out at you the most? I think with um, Coach Shula and some of the play calling, especially in the last few weeks, I think has really set the tone and allowed him to really just take control of the game. I see the read option being a big play uh, in, in the last couple of weeks, and one in particular – you could not miss it was his 69-yard run. When you break this down, I got really excited because we could just do the whole segment on this one play because, right. you know, you, you have the, the Dolphins who come with a six-man box. So right now, automatically, they are outnumbered with the five linemen, Cam Newton and McCaffrey in the backfield. And when you watch this, this option, you'll see the safety – Fake, be faked out. And you'll see this numerous times in some of the plays that we'll break down or you'll see in the game is that the safety goes with McCaffrey. His eyes are gone. The defensive end goes with McCaffrey. And that means that they are totally faked out and they do not know where the ball is out. And then you'll see Cam, nice fake, pull it down, and then he just hightails. And it's a foot race. It's an old school, great school track meet. Who can catch who the fastest? And I tell you what, that is one of the, the best play calls and executed by Cam and McCaffrey. And it shows you also the threat McCaffrey has when he doesn't even have the ball. The guys are running, and they have to get out the box quick to try to catch McCaffrey, even if he doesn't have the ball. And I'll add to that, you know, i got to give Daryl Williams a shout-out on that play because, you know, he's zone blocking inside on that zone read and then sees that backer jet to the outside trying to cut off that read uh, for any play going outside, ends up getting on that defender, and it ends up being an inside cut. Mm -hmm. And it was just to perfection. Uh, that's what you want your young tackle to be able to adjust to, and he did it, and that is what really sprung that 69-yard run. And, and we talked about this yesterday. Darrell Williams uh, on this film, I, I know, had his best game as a Panther. Yep. I, I, I can almost guarantee he had his highest grade when you look at his his production in this game. Yeah, and I, I feel like that whole offensive line has improved these last three, three weeks. They've um, been able to get the running game going, obviously, as we've been able to see, but also pass protection I think has been stellar. And uh, I think those tackles, both Matt Khalil and Daryl Williams, um, that have elevated their play. They're more comfortable. They're doing a really good job. And you can see it because that gives Cam the ability to get some passes downfield on important third downs. Um, you know, Cam Newton's been able to do things through the air, just traditional quarterback style. Uh, there was a third and eight or third and nine in that game where you had Devin Funches lined out to the left. You had Christian McCaffrey kind of in the um, uh, backfield back there. And as they run this play to try and get a first down, you see Funches drive straight down the field past the first down marker. And Christian McCaffrey hits the flat. And as he's hitting the flat, there's a defender there, but he realizes, you know, probably let's guard that first down marker. So he actually drops off of Christian McCaffrey a little bit. And so what that happens is there's a small window for Funches. He drives past that first down marker about three or four yards and then comes back to Cam Newton, yep. who throws a beautiful strike to him with three defenders right there. Even the guy that was going to cover Christian kind of drops back. So it's just a small, tight window there. That's just quarterback 101, old school, drop back passer, set his feet, threw to a spot. Funches ran a perfect route, first down Panthers. And, and you talked about that footwork. Uh, I, 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 you know, talk about having a great game and everybody wants to talk about the level of play by the Dolphins. The bottom line in that locker room, all 
season so far has been. If we take care of our business and yeah. tighten up and do the fundamental things that we have to do, we will we will win. And you look at it with the seven and three record, and a big reason of that is because Cam has improved his footwork, his fundamentals, his un, his his command of the game. And I think when Kelvin Benjamin was traded, let's be frank, it took away kind of that safety blanket. Yeah. I don't want to say Cam was dependent on Benjamin, but it forced him to explore the entire offense. And now you're seeing all these weapons, as head coach Ron Rivera said. We got a ton of weapons. We got to get them involved. And one play in particular where Cam used his brains to beat the Dolphins' defense was the touchdown to Funches. And everybody knows, and uh, Ed Dixon confirmed, that was an on-field audible to that play. And it was based on this. And Panther fans understand, anytime an offense is running the ball, our five offensive linemen can block five defensive linemen. We talked about box right. count in the past. Okay. Now you talk about number six. If everybody's out into the route, number six belongs to the quarterback. In this case, Cam looked at the numbers count and saw a more favorable situation to get the ball outside to Funches and now put him in space. You talked about Funches making a leap in his football acumen. That was an example of that, too, because you teach young guys on these smoke and things and to get away from the thick atmosphere. I always say inside that that box, it, it's thick in there. That's where the world is. You want to get out in space, and he did that. Dipped inside, got outside, and cruised into the end zone, palming the ball like Dr. J. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just, I love that, I love that part of the play. You're seeing guys step up their game, not just physically, but mentally as well, and I think that's boding well. Now, speaking of ste stepping up, love this this slug on the segment, the jukebox, because Christian McCaffrey put the dime in the jukebox and, and turned it up on Monday Night Football, didn't he? This is a guy that's just starting to get more comfortable, and I know he was a smart player coming out of Stanford. He had the skill set. He has a lot of different things in his toolbox that he can use, but there's still – that learning curve as a rookie. He's still just a rookie, and these guys progress at different times, and he just has done the slow, steady drip, you know, the slow, steady progression that suddenly uh, it's piling up and looking good out there. Yeah, and I think that as he goes through his rookie season, he's going to hit the wall, and there's things that he's going to see physically that are going to be different than college. But then also he's starting to settle in and understand how defenses are going to play him and that they have to try to use their speed. And, and in a particular play where the Dolphins are in great position, um, they got the gaps covered, um, everybody's in the right spot, and because of McCaffrey's speed, the defense, the safety has to use speed, thinking McCaffrey's going to the outside pylon. And so he has to get on his horse. McCaffrey understands that, stops, gives him a subtle little juke, cuts back inside for the touchdown. That's all recognition by McCaffrey and understanding his speed and what defenses have to do to try to stop him. And uh, he capitalized on it on that play. Is that is that like one of those plays? Because you guys been there uh, as a player where you you're especially defensive guys ruck where you're on the sideline watching that take place, and it's like, oh, he didn't. <laughs> I was right down there, and I know exactly what Mike's talking about. I was on the sideline where they were coming out from their own end zone. They were about 20-yard line or somewhere in that area, and there was a big third down play. And it was obvious that those backers, they had three men rushing. They had the backers kind of floating around a little bit in there in the box. Cam kind of thought in his mind, you know, maybe a blitz is coming, something like that's coming. It sure, sure enough did. And so all this pressure is coming at him, and he sees McCaffrey in the flat, and it's well short of the first down, and you don't know if he's going to make it. But he makes that catch, and his feet stop dead. And Kiko Alonso cannot stop. His momentum <laughs> carries him a little outside, and that's just the split second he needed yeah. to get inside mm -hmm. and get that first down. And I'm watching this thing. I'm on the 20-yard line standing next to the – the Panthers doctors, you know, checking this thing out. And I was mm -hmm. like, y'all doctors might need to roll out there. That ankle, <laughs> those ankles just got broke on Kiko. But, man, it, it was a great first down, and especially coming off your, you know, in your own, uh, that, that territory of the field where you want to get some first downs piled together so you can change field position. Just a great play by Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, and, and, and here again, 
and he's a first round pick, so you know he's going to get hyped up. But now I, I, we're seeing uh, a young man who wants to play football. And, the, you know, we talk about breaking ankles, and those plays are nice because he had some great plays in the game. But the play I loved is where he got out on the Funches touchdown that we just talked about, and he threw the key, a key block. Yeah, he did. He threw a key block on that play. And, I mean, it just t- totally took out the, the uh, defender on that play and was one of the things that spring because when you run that here, again, we talk about fundamentals. When you run that play, you have got to get that initial defender for that receiver for, to break in the open, and that's exactly what he did. So, yeah, and I'll, mean, I'll add one thing on there. Sure, got to give O line love again there. I think one of the weapons this team is starting to discover is that Matt Khalil, yep. like yeah. his brother, yep. can get out in space and yeah. block guys. And nine out of ten times, you, he's running out there, he's making a pretty solid block, block, block or a great block. And he was also another key in that. I think Christian sprung that first defender so that Funches could get up in there. But then when Khalil gets out there and gets the second guy, Mm -hmm. it's a foot race to the end zone, easy Mm -hmm. touchdown for Funches. And uh, there were a number of plays, and and, and guys, before we go into any of his plays, just talk about how great it was. And and right here at this desk, we all agreed that Stewart was going to have a bounce-back game. How awesome hey, was that? The film don't lie. Go back to last week's All-22, and you said it. You said <laughs> he is going to get off on Monday night. Uh, I added he was going to stomp a mud hole in him, and that's exactly oh, what he did. Didn't he? Yep. I mean, and that's – I mean, you almost kind of felt it last week. I mean, you could just see – if you know Stu, he's a guy that takes pride, and, and you knew that he was going to bounce back, and he did it in a big way. And we also talked about last week in All-22 about Coach Shula having faith and going back to the big fella and getting him vertical, north and south. And you can see some plays where Stu gets that ball and he's going downhill, and it's four or five yards before he even gets touched. And I tell you, if you don't touch Stu within the first three yards, good luck. I mean, once he has that full head of steam – I mean, he's going to rumble for six, seven, eight, ten plus yards, and uh, wow, he just had a, he had a great game, and it was good to see him come back and uh, use his blockers. I feel like the old line wanted to get him going again, and there were some big gaping holes that you can drive your car through, stay, and that always helps. Stay right there, Kevin. Let's talk about the technical side of that because there were some things we talked about before the game that we saw come true. And I think everybody knew it was coming from a technical standpoint when you talk about the way this offensive line perform for their different backs. I think you said it last week, mm-hmm. that there's different ways to block for different players. Did we see that on Monday night? Yeah, and, you know, what you saw up front from that offensive line was a really good use of um, – the double teams, and that's the only way in the NFL you're going to get any movement at all. When it's a one-on-one block, you're kind of position block and trying to tie a guy up. But when you have a chance to get a double team, that's where movement can occur. And by moving a guy downfield, you're not only opening up lanes width-wise, mm-hmm. but also depth-wise, that if you get through that first level, then there's a cut somewhere off of that because that defender is downfield. Or what I like to do when I was double teaming with Jordan Gross when I was here is if we can drive that guy enough, mm-hmm. you run him right into the linebackers or they can't even see where that ball is going. And those guys up front did a great job of getting those double teams going. I think the cohesion is slowly developing with this group. Tyler Larson is settled in there. Uh, we don't know Ryan Khalil's status, but right now he's grown up a lot as a player and has really been instrumental in some of those double teams also. So when you looked at some plays with, with Jonathan Stewart, um, you know, one in particular I was looking at, you know, Stewart goes best, and you said it, when he's going north and south. And they were able to get some movement right up front. Stahl, uh, Stu saw that there was some movement and kind of tucked in right behind those blocks, was patient, waited for those things to develop, and then just made a burst to the back side. And it's not way back side, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like we talked about last week on All-22 it's still within the realm of that center guard area, yeah. and it sprung him for a big run. A, you're talking about A, negative A. When you when you look at the play, uh, going to the play side, the first gap is A. Then negative A is the first gap behind the center. So what, what you saw in this game, and you, you can see it here on this video, is that it actually, they, the movement was so great on some of those plays, and plays like this one, that you see the A gap, move because they get so much movement and when he's really hitting it 
if, if, if you left the, the, the gaps denoted before the play, it's still a gap. Correct. But those guys moved the line of scrimmage so much that it that a gap moved behind the center. Right. And uh, I, I'm telling you, when you see stuff like that as an offensive line coach, oh, yeah. We we on time. We we cooking with fish grease. Okay, <laughs> y'all know that. No, and I'll I'll give another shout out. You know the play you're talking about with with Matt Khalil. He's on the back side of that play mm-hmm. and completely washes down that defensive lineman. Meaning, you know that D lineman wants to go that way. The play is going to the side where the D lineman's going to. But Matt doesn't just kind of position block. He get he stays on it, keeps pushing, and like you said, that whole thing washes down. So the A gap still the A gap and and. Jonathan Stewart hits it right where he's supposed to, and it's a beautiful play. Yeah, and I, and here again, people know, you know, and the one reason we, we do this show to get into stuff like this is because, you know, people know they're seeing something different but not quite sure what it is. So that's one thing we're trying to do, uh, Panther fans, is give you – I know it's technical, so go along with us and you'll – hey, you'll learn some football. Um, here, here Here's the thing. Uh, I like this, this, this slug of this, Homeland Security. Has it gotten to the point where we take Luke Keekley for granted? Is he so good that it's like, okay, Luke will take care of it? Yeah, you know, Luke, he makes it look so easy because he's fast, right? And he not only is fast to the tackle or fast on his blitz and hitting the A gap, but he's also fast in coverage. And it just seems like when the time is right, Luke pops up with that key interception. (laughs) I think this is truly the play of the game. Right oh, and how no about, doubt. How about, no doubt. How about season? I, no doubt. I think I tell you what, it makes this bye week a lot better having that play setting the tone. And when you look at where they're at, you know, you're just kind of in a slug fest. I think the score was ten to seven, and and you're looking at halftime right in front of you, and all of a sudden you have this big play and this interception. You'll see uh, Luke slide to the right, and then all of a sudden. Um, Thomas Davis kicks out, and so then Luke then takes the, the, the tight end, and he just undercuts the pass in a key interception. And Luke always is in the right place at the right time. Now, it, why I say that's the key part of the game is because that changed the momentum of the game. I really believe that even though the Dolphins' offense was struggling, their defense was hanging in there, this sucked the air out of them. Mm-hmm. This sucked the air out of them. And then all of a sudden, the offense came in with the sledgehammer and put points on the board going into halftime. And from that point on, I think it was good night, Irene. Lou. Uh, it fires me up. And you know what was great about that play on that interception? You can see in the film Thomas Davis, Mike Adams, Luke Keekley. They're communicating. They're talking. They're, they're pointing things out. And then the ball snapped. They're instantly where they need to go and it sets up that opportunity to get that kind of play. And I think another one, you know, when you look at this linebacker core between Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley, I mean, there was a big critical fourth down play. It was fourth and short, and they're going for this thing, and you figure... Oh, on, a, on a quick snap, too. Yeah, yes, and it's yes. and so... But what you see from this play is, you know, they're trying to get movement up front, but you see a couple of openings open up where Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley are right there. They're in their position, the gap that they're supposed to have. And this is instinct. It's fourth and short. If you get let, that guy gets past the line of scrimmage, that's first down. They use instinct. They see it just a little window open up. Both those linebackers fire into those gaps that they have. You know, the running back goes to the front side and sees 58. There's no way he's getting anything there. Cuts back to the left, and who's he met with? Luke Keekley. And this is a critical fourth down stop. Not only did they not get any positive yardage, but again, a negative play. And again, that's how Luke Keekley affects the game. That's how Thomas Davis affects the game. And this defense is really in sync right now. You guys talk about uh, momentum in football. We've talked about it in the past. Okay, so uh, let, let's recap because I always like to tell people what we're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what we told you. What we have told you about this Panthers team headed into this bye week is you have your best player on offense, Cam Newton, playing at his best level of the season, and you have your best player on defense probably playing at the best level of anybody who's done the game. And, and, I, and I say that without any qualms. What does that bode for the last seven games? I think it's huge. Um, I, I remember – you know, just when you have Luke out there, he's getting guys in position. And let's not forget, 
as a defensive lineman, you don't get to see everything. So when your middle linebacker's hollering out plays and moving people to adjust to the play, that really helps you out and the confidence because now all of a sudden you're on top of plays. So when you have your two key leaders on both sides of the ball, you have your special teams playing well, um, that's, all, that's, that's winning in all three phases. And that's, you're going to win your share of ball games, and you're going to get into the playoffs, and you're going to win your share. You're giving yourself an opportunity to get to the big dance. Write it down. Mike Rucker. That's it. First one to say. <laughs> First one. Playoffs. First Let one. Me, well, and I'll, I'll address the offensive side with Cam Newton. You know, things have slowed down for him a little bit. Not He was a seven-year guy, but in terms of there were some new wrinkles put in in the offseason. Mike Shula challenged this offense to grow and evolve. Uh, he had the injury setback, so some of that progression was slowed a little bit. But now you're seeing with this season how fantastic he's able to play as he's settled down and gotten much more comfortable with this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of moving parts in this, but when he's having fun, my goodness, that means that whole offense is playing well. The defense feeds off of it. The whole team's play elevates. And you talk about Cam and some of his celebrations. I want you to add this to this All-22. That last pass breakup, mm-hmm. Luke Keekley. Mm-hmm. It was like a kid in the candy store because there was the Paul was knocked down. They weren't going to get any any uh, play out of that, and he's looking around for somebody to celebrate with. I mean, he's pounding, <laughs> yeah. he's shaking, yeah. he's trying to headbutt guys yeah. and high five, and everybody else is kind of business as usual. But he looked like a little kid out there. It's mm-hmm. it's contagious. It's that mm-hmm. energy, and that's that extra factor you need if you're going to make a playoff run. Remember, I said this before. Uh, the last part of enthusiasm is I A S M. I am so motivated, and those two guys are motivated and leading this football team, and that makes for some fun football Mm -hmm. going down the stretch. I can't wait. I can't wait to get off. Well, it'll take this bye week, but I can't wait to get back. All right, so Panther fans, as we told you, if it happens between the lines, you will hear it here on All 22 because the the film film don't don't lie. lie. We'll see you next week.